Good morning, people. Watch them at 65. Lisa Boyce, I'm on early because I have an appointment to go to. Let me give you a verse of scripture. It is actually out of Ephesians 2.10. So it says that we are, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. We're never saved by works. We're saved for works, not by which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. You're not saved by works and you're not kept saved by works. Okay? But we are saved for works, good works, unto God. That's where your rewards are going to come from, up in heaven. Yep. Let me give you the Gospels in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Christ shed his blood for all of our sins. Past, present, and future was buried and rose again on the third day according to Scripture. We are saved. That's why we're saved, how we're saved, and why we're kept saved. It's only through his blood. Okay? It is grace through faith in Christ alone. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. You have to have faith. It is grace through faith in Christ alone, not of ourselves, not of works, lest any man should boast. It is grace, something we didn't earn, something we don't deserve, that God gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him will not perish, but have eternal life. How do you come to that? You admit you're a sinner in need of Christ. The moment you put your faith and trust in Christ, the moment you accept Christ as Savior, not only are you saved, but you are justified by the blood of Jesus. You are protected by the blood of Jesus. You are rapture ready, which is going to happen at any time. And you're sealed until the day of redemption, which means you cannot and will not lose your salvation. The Holy Spirit will indwell in you. The Holy Spirit will lead you, guide you, minister to you, encourage you, teach you. The Holy Spirit will change you if you let him. If you let him. So this came out this morning. Now, I, I, I've been saying for the longest time that, you know, all these nations are in cahoots together. And all of this is, going, is building up for one big giant war. Battle of Armageddon. And the battle of Gog and Magog again. So, why did Tyran or Iran uh, says North Korean delegation, why did they visit? Why did they visit each other? Well, they're saying it's for trade. I'm saying BS, basically. That's what it is. It's not for trade. It's how to eliminate Israel. That's what they're trading. They're trading information on how... That's what they should say. Yeah, it's trade. We're trading information on how to eliminate Israel or the U.S. So Iran's foreign minister said today that... Uh, said today... A North Korean delegation attended an Iranian expo... In the capital of Iran, which is Tehran, last week and discussed bilateral trade with government officials and the private sector. Yeah, right. So North Korea and Iran have long been suspected of cooperating on ballistic missile programs, possibly exchanging technical expertise and components that went into their manufacturer. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what they're talking about. Foreign Ministry spokesman, Nas Na I think his name is Nasir Kanani, denied such claims, <laughs> saying that some media outlets have sought to make biased speculations by publishing untrue and baseless news. I could say a whole lot there. It was reported last week that a North Korean delegation led by the ca a cabinet member or minister for international trade was making a rare visit to Iran. Iran has provided a large number of ballistic missiles 
to Russia for use in his war with Ukraine. Interesting. Reuters reported this in February. North Korea is also suspected, listen to this, of supplying Russia with missiles and artillery, although both countries have denied the allegation. If they're supplying all these weapons, then why is the U.S. doing it as well? Something to think about. So Iran is hosting a six export potential exhibition of the Islamic Republic of Iran. Started Friday all the way to May 1st. Interesting. So Blinken, and this is off of Jerusalem Post. So Blinken urges Hamas to accept the generous Israeli peace proposal and release the remaining hostages. So, Anthony Blinken arrived in Saudi Arabia this morning for the first part of a wider Middle East tour. How many tours is this man going to do? Where he called Hamas to accept the latest and extraordinarily generous proposal for a Gaza truce. Well, the United States has sent measurable progress in the humanitarian situation in Gaza over the past few weeks. Blinken said upon his arrival, but urged Israel to do more. So you're allowing the ICC to issue arrest warrants, but yet you're urging them in one voice, in one part of your mouth to do more. But you're not saying anything about the ICC. Yeah. Speaking in Riyadh at the opening of the U.S. Gulf Cooperation Council meeting, uh, Blinken said the most effective way to alleviate the humanitarian... Those are alarms going off right now as we speak. Of going, uh, rockets going into Israel. So he said uh, the most effective way to alleviate the humanitarian crisis in Gaza was to achieve a ceasefire. When he said then Washington continued efforts to prevent the Gaza war from expanding. Later, Blinken said the United States and Saudi Arabia has done intensive work together over the last month on Israeli-Saudi normalizations. So during a panel discussion at the World Economic Forum in Riyadh, the World Economic Forum is going on right now in Riyadh, Blinken said he had not yet seen a plan from Israel on a Rafah offensive that would protect civilians. This is what they're so up in arms about, folks, which is fake. The Saudi minister said today, um, when asked about Saudi-U.S. security pact negotiations, that bilateral agreements between the kingdom and the United States were very, very close. Keep in mind, like I've been saying, they don't want Israel in Rafah. And they're going to pull out all the stops to try to stop them. Anthony Blinken might as well buy stock over there because he's, so, he's there so much. And he's not accomplishing anything. He says most of the work has already been done. Has already been done. And we have a broad outlines of what we think needs to happen on the Palestinian front. Yeah. A two-state solution. That's their plan. This is their entire plan. This is why that big X was over the, this nation during that eclipse. It says the only thing standing between the people of Gaza and a ceasefire is Hamas. 
They've said that before. They have to they have to decide that and they have to decide quickly he said Egyptian foreign minister said that Egypt was hopeful about a proposal for truths and hostage release in the Gaza Strip but that it was waiting for a response on the proposal from Israel and Hamas even Sam agrees in Riyadh, Blinken is expected to meet with senior Saudi leaders and hold a wider meeting with counterparts in five Arab states, Qatar, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, and Jordan. Now, let me stop right there and say this while Samson is right on top of here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. This is also... These are also nations that are joining BRICS, okay? Don't think that this is all. This has nothing to do with Israel. This has nothing to do with nothing except a two-state solution and the United States financial crisis right now because all those nations are BRIC nations or trying to go into BRICS. So, group of European nations, including Norway, plan to recognize Palestinian statehood in conjunction with presentation of an Arab state-backed peace plan to the United Nations. This is why the church has to be gone soon. This is why the church has to be gone soon. They are desperately, desperately trying to get a two-state solution. How else are you going to get that also? You got to get rid of Netanyahu because he is definitely not for this two-state solution. So that's what all these talks are about. Splitting up Israel. Amongst other things. Like I said, money. So, again, that's why the church has to be gone soon. And the church will be gone soon. Because now it's getting to the point where, and I say this every night, it's getting to the point where you got Russia that is about to pull the trigger even either on Ukraine or the United States. And you have Iran that's about to pull the trigger either on Israel or the United States. And you got now North Korea's involved in all this. So guess what? It's just one big happy rogue family. Happy evil family. And the United States is also in that mix. Because the United States is supplying Iran and yeah, yeah, North Korea as well. So yeah it's gonna be over soon folks just hang in there it's gonna be over soon i know i know so i'm gonna link all this in the description box and i will be back later um i have to take uh, kevin to the dentist so i will be back later thank you